Hey friends, welcome back to the Crank and Boom podcast. I'm your host, Tao Green. One of the toughest aspects of entrepreneurship is facing your fears. Fears can come up in a number of ways. Will my idea or product or service sell? Will people like it? Will people like me? Should I really be running my own business? And what if this whole thing is a terrible idea and doesn't work at all? It's hard not to imagine the worst case scenario. And in your planning, sometimes that can be helpful in covering all your bases. But to be successful, you've got to hold on to the confidence in the middle of whatever fear storm is hiding your path forward. Confidence, the cornerstone of success, propels us forward even in the face of uncertainty. I'm going to share some ideas and tactics that you can use to build your confidence and conquer your fears in this week's episode. So, Let's get into it. When our business made a significant change and turning point was when we decided to close our Thai restaurant, Thai Orchid Cafe, and go all in on the ice cream. It was probably one of the biggest mountains of fear that I had to overcome. This is all in as in my entire job, my husband Mike's entire job, and our complete entire family's income was going to go all in on this crazy ice cream thing. We were spending so much time hustling, doing this ice cream thing for several years that there was not really a lot of time to contemplate and there was not a lot of time to plan because we were just go, go, go doing so much, which I think is a very common tale for a lot of entrepreneurs. You spend so much time doing, you don't get to spend as much time thinking through and planning. It was really in those moments that we would sit in the van while we're going to an event or late at night at 2 a.m. where we might have a moment to really talk to each other that we would go back and forth about all of our different options. I think we came to a point where we saw that there was a lot of potential with the ice cream business And we knew after operating the Thai restaurant for almost 10 years that we were starting to hit a ceiling as to what we could do with the restaurant from a financial side, even though the ice cream was only making a small percentage of our income, we could see the upside of what it could be. We could see the sales from one week be as much as we would make in the Thai restaurant in one month, but it was still a big gamble. And I think any other mom and pop operation that didn't want to grow would have been perfectly happy just hanging out and operating that restaurant. But that wasn't the life that I wanted. I couldn't see 10 years in the future what the future was. At the time when we were making that decision, it felt like we were giving up our entire income and gambling our whole livelihood on this idea. There really was absolutely no guarantee that any of this would work, but we felt like the upside of what it could be, because what if what if we could be in grocery stores? What if we could make it a national brand? What if we could ship ice cream? I remember at that point thinking that was such a pipe dream, and I'm glad we did that, but it was a very painful process because Not only was I leaving behind a business that we had built with my parents together, but ultimately that was such a big portion of my life and I knew how to show up in the world. It felt very daunting to go into this new space. It felt really almost like a betrayal to my family because we had spent all this time building the business. And I remember my mom asking me why I would throw away something we had built so long. That devastated me because you never want to disappoint your parents and you don't want to make them sad. You don't want to make them feel like their efforts were for naught. I think now we all see that all those efforts to build that restaurant wasn't for naught because all the training and all the work and everything I learned in that process was just steps to get me where I am today. one of the biggest things with conquering fear is I think some folks will think, I don't want to waste my time or I don't want to go do something and then have to throw it away. I've really adopted the mindset that nothing is wasted. So even if you go and get a job and you end up hating that job, I don't think that's a waste of time because I think you had the experience and now you've realized that you hate that job and that you never want to do that again. I think every little step and every choice you make is 
a step towards learning or a step advancing towards whatever it is you're trying to achieve. So I think if you're able to adopt that mindset that nothing is wasted, that takes away a lot of the fear that you're going to lose money or lose time. I've probably lost more money than I have made. Maybe that's not true, but I feel like that a lot. But I've come to peace that if I don't try things, then I'll never be able to have the opportunity to to learn or do something different, bigger, better, happier, all those things. I think that's one mindset that has helped me a lot. One of the lessons I've learned as an entrepreneur is celebrating. Taking time to intentionally honor your achievements and share them with others is a big part of what makes the whole journey worth it. And one of my favorite ways to do it is with food, of course. Gold Belly is our partner in how we deliver our ice cream to customers all over the U.S. so they can make their special moments even more special wherever they are. And whatever milestone you're celebrating with your friends and family, Gold Belly has just the thing. Whether you need Guy Fieri's trash can dessert nachos for dad's birthday or Martha Stewart's famous banana pudding for your sister's baby shower, Gold Belly can ship it right to your door and make your event even more special. So if you haven't taken advantage of Gold Belly's amazing offerings, now's the time. Run over to their website at goldbelly.com and make your celebration unforgettable. Hey friends, Tao here, popping in to share my excitement about one of my favorite companies in the whole world, Holly Hill & Co. If you are like me and are obsessed with food, especially local food, you will appreciate those special ties that happen around the table. Holly Hill & Co. believes, like I do, that food creates connection and community unlike anything else. That's why they take care to strengthen the ties across the generations between family, the farmer, and the land, all the way to the food that ends up on your table. You can experience exactly what this means at one of Holly Hill's nine unique Central Kentucky restaurants and through their beautiful emails. If you're in Kentucky, be sure to find the nearest location and get ready for an amazing experience with the most fantastic food. Holly Hill's co-founder is none other than my dear friend, James Beard-nominated chef Weta Michael, who's been a force on the Kentucky food scene for over 20 years. Learn more about their incredible food community by visiting hollyhillandco.com, where you'll find stories, recipes, how-tos, and even curated gifts. Again, that's hollyhillandco.com, and let them know that Tao from Crank and Boom sent you. I like being in an uncomfortable space and then working through it until I'm comfortable with it. And I think when you are able to stack those sorts of actions where you find a challenge, you conquer it, those are the steps on how you build confidence. And so the more you lean into taking risks and doing things that are scary and doing things that are hard, those are the times and the ways that you really build confidence in yourself because you're doing stuff that not everybody is doing because if it was easy, everybody would be doing it, but it's not. When you are able to conquer a challenge or conquer your own fears and do something that is brave and courageous, those little experiences are what is going to build your confidence and help take the fear out of the equation. And I think over time, because I was able to lean into risk and lean into scary things and do things that not everybody else would do, things that people would say, that's a dumb, crazy idea. And I would do it anyway. Sometimes it works out. A lot of times it doesn't. But when it does, it feels real good. The more times you do that, the more confident you become in those uncomfortable times. Because especially in the world of small business, All sorts of stuff comes at you all the time. So the more mentally prepared and the more mentally resilient you are to tackle those things when they come, the less scary it is going to be. I had to reframe how I approached when mistakes were made or when something didn't live up to what we wanted it to be. I think when I started to sort of release that perfectionism, it's when I let go of 
failures to my own self-worth. I think this is something that probably a lot of people encounter is, oh, if I make a mistake or if my business fails or if this project fails or someone's disappointed in me, then that's the end all be all. I want you to rethink that and really open yourself to trying new things because you never know what will be on the other side of that. But if you're so afraid of trying new things that it's not going to work out or that it's not going to go the way you need it to, that really is a hindrance. It's almost reprogramming your brain, especially as a leader and an entrepreneur, reprogramming to say failure is not really failure. And I brush off mistakes just as much as I brush off our victories. I kind of say, yay, do a little cheer, and then we move on to the next thing. And I kind of do that with mistakes and failures too. Probably five, six years ago, I tried to launch gift sets for Crank and Boom, and it just was a massive snooze ball. Like nobody was interested. And then within a couple years, we had a marketing person who came along, hi Christy, who really changed a lot of the ways we did things. And she said, this needs to be at a different price point. We need to include these things. Suddenly they sell like hotcakes. And so if we had just said, oh, gift sets didn't work. We're just never going to do it again. We would have missed out on the fantastic holiday sales that we have now because of this cool thing that we offer now that just needed to be reframed and needed to be rethought. And so even when things don't work out, we don't ever kill it completely. For the most part, ideas get to be tabled, but they don't go to the graveyard. And I think you need to use that same mindset when it comes to trying things in your business. I think it's so important to keep an open mind Try not to be overly perfectionistic. Just let it roll and to not attach things that don't work out to your own self-worth because I honestly admire someone for trying and it not working than someone who doesn't try at all. Here are Tao's takeaways for this episode. Number one, to build courage, you got to do hard things things. If you're doing easy stuff, just like everyone else, you're just going to live in that space forever. But if you want to become more courageous, you have to use courage to do hard things and things that feel challenging. And once you start building that muscle of courage, which is something you can build over time, the more hard things you do, the easier doing hard things becomes. Number two, which kind of builds on number one, get comfortable with the uncomfortable. Many people want to avoid uncomfortable situations. They want to avoid challenges. They want to avoid failure. They want to make their life as pain-free, which makes so much sense because we're human. And naturally and instinctually, doing hard things is not what our survival mechanism wants us to do. If it's something that you want and confidence is something that you want to build, you have to get comfortable with being uncomfortable. And that means when something sounds scary, maybe you should do it and it'll help you get rid of that fear. Because once you do more hard things, there are fewer hard things that you know that you can't do. I think in life, you start building a catalog of hard things that you've conquered. And as you go in time and conquer more hard things, that is where your confidence will build. Number three, get excited about the process of learning. I think if you can create a lifelong learning mindset, then doing scary things does not feel scary. It feels like something that you are embarking on the next adventure. It, it feels like I'm going to go into this new project and I'm going to figure it out and it's going to feel so good once I figure it out. If I don't figure it out, I will find somebody that will help me figure it out. That's how I've always tackled challenges, knowing and really falling in love with the process of figuring out new stuff. I think that's something that allows our business to stay fresh. I think it allows us to not stay stagnant because we have a team that's always loving new stuff and always wanting to bring something new to the table, whether it's a new product or 
a new program or a new offering or a new flavor, we always are trying to take the opportunity to create new things. And I think that keeps us energized. So be excited about the process of learning. Love that part of that process is failing, making mistakes having something not work out the way you want it to. And if you can reframe that and think of it as a gift instead of a failure or some sort of ding on your self-worth, something to get down about, if you can let it roll off of you, then you're going to be in a really great place. I hope you found our discussion on facing fear and building confidence in the world of entrepreneurship truly inspiring. Remember that growing your confidence and overcoming your fears is a process, but it's very doable when you can shift your mindset on how to tackle these situations. I know you can do it. I believe in you. And take this as a reminder that you have the power to build a life that you love. Do not let fear get in the way. Please join us next week for my tips on building a positive work environment for your team. I'm so excited to be talking about this, and I can't wait to see you then. Thank you so much for listening to the Crank and Boom podcast. If you want business advice and tactics like this every week, click that follow button wherever you listen to your podcast so you never miss an episode with us. Also, if you like what you heard today, it would mean oh so very much to me if you would leave us a review that helps other people find us. Leave a note on what topics you want me to cover more of because we would love to hear from you. I can't wait to meet you here again very soon. Until next time, peace. This is a production of Four Eyes Media.